Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this beautiful vase dazzler. So here we are again, ready to feature another Volpo Robotics project. Why do I keep on featuring them? Well, there's several reasons. One, the open source, so you can do your own mods afterwards to customize them. Two, they're well designed. Everything has nice tolerances and generally they fit together first go without much fiddling. They're really well thought out. Three, they have great documentation, which makes building them really straightforward. And four, and most importantly, they're fun. So let's get started on this one. I have the kit contents here and inside you will find an LED ring, you will find a switch, you will find a potentiometer, you will find an Arduino Nano, a single screw with matching Allen key, that's a commitment, and you will find a switch and nine volt battery clip. I actually have two of those, so thank you very much, Paul. Things that aren't included that you will need are an actual battery and you will also need a set of pliers as well. There is one other thing that you need and that is the 3D printed parts. So let me show you how I did mine. Okay, so there are three on Thingiverse and we have our base, we have our sliding battery cover and then we have our top. I've checked and mine seem to fit together nicely and the most important one for the fit is going to be this sliding battery case. Perfect, not gonna come out. So now we have to print the actual vase to go on top. Now this design is different to some of the other Vorpal ones in that not everything is made from Vorpal. It's actually suggested to use two potential vase designs from Thingiverse. So I printed both. Firstly, we have this one here. It's quite tall. It's quite fine and narrow. The features look really good in the clear ABS that I use. Secondly, we have this alternate design, also from Thingiverse. The links for both of these will be in the description. Now, both of these were printed in vase mode. If you don't know what that is, it means instead of doing a layer, lifting up the Z, doing a layer, lifting up the Z, it does one continuous spiral like a spring and it's just very smoothly and gradually getting higher. The end result means there's no seams down the side of a print where it lifts up and it leaves a little blotch. And it's also fairly quick to print. The downsides are it's only a single wall thickness, so it's quite flexible. You might be able to see how much that's flexing there. I think you could crush it quite easily, so you've got to be careful with these. But anyway, the parts are here, so let's start the build. To do this, we're going to be following the wiki, and the very first step is to download the latest sketch to put on the Nano, just in case there's been any updates, so let's do that first. So this is the GitHub page for the Vorpal Vars Dazzler, and this of course will be linked in the description. We're gonna follow through the folder structure until we get to our actual sketch. I like to hit the raw button and that will remove everything except the actual sketch. I can now go Control A to select all, and then Control C to copy. And then I'm going to switch to Arduino, where I've opened up a new empty sketch. I'm gonna highlight it and paste over the top. Now double check in your tools that you have the right board selected. So that's Arduino Nano and whatever COM port comes up for you. So now that we have it pasted and saved, we need to install a library. So we're gonna to come to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and it says here we need FastLev. So hopefully it's in the inbuilt manager. And now we should be ready to compile and upload. All done, fantastic. All right, so our Nano is flashed with the latest firmware and we're ready to go, so let's get on to the build. We're gonna start by threading some of our pieces through the plastic part, so that way when we plug them in, it's gonna be final. The first one of those we're gonna do is the actual LED ring, and you've got three wires on that, and then you've got a matching cutout on here. We're gonna have the LEDs facing up. We're gonna spin it around, push the wires through, and then thread it and we might need to very slightly bend these down for clearance and we also might need to squeeze the heat shrink just to wiggle it through. Now it's probably hard to see on the video but there are three bits that protrude outwards and we're trying to clip the PCB underneath that. So what I might do is angle it to get it underneath two of them and then a little push down on the last one. There we go, satisfying click. 
and it's all ready to go. You can see this is through the bottom and it's not coming out anywhere. So that's a really nice fit. Next, we're gonna take the base and we're gonna locate our holes on the back. So we have the USB hole, potentiometer hole, and then the hole for the switch. So we're gonna start with that switch and we're gonna thread through the two jumper leads for that. Oh, actually I almost forgot. It says that we don't need this retaining nut. I think in fact it's gonna get in the way. So let's ditch that and then thread this one through and hopefully it's a really nice fit. Excellent, always impressed with the way Volpel design things to just fit with the components. Now the battery and switch we don't need to pre-assemble because it's gonna sit in here on top, like so. But one we might get in place now is the potentiometer. So let's just pull off the top and then you'll notice there's a tiny little hole above here and that's what we're gonna align this with. We'll take off the screw and this little tab here is gonna line up with that little cutout and then we'll get the nut back in place. This is the step that we have the pliers for. So let's get that tight, but not too tight because we're working with 3D printed parts and everything is more or less assembled here. Time to go onto the electronics. Couldn't get my 2D printer to work despite my 3D printers both firing on all cylinders at the moment. So I have the instructions on my phone for the wiring. So let's go through that together. Firstly, make sure you orientate the Nano like it is in the diagram. And that means the pins that we're plugging into are on the underside, even though we're looking from the top. So we will need to be a little bit careful there. So we're gonna start with the ground black wire for the LED ring. And that is gonna be on the left-hand side as the diagram is orientated. And we're gonna plug that in from behind, like so. And then we're gonna come from top to bottom on this side. So we'll start with the switch. And we're gonna have red at the top going into VCC in, sorry, V in, voltage in and then the black immediately underneath that from the switch going to the ground. Next one's a reset pin, so we're gonna avoid it. We're gonna come back to our LED one after the reset. So that's the fourth pin down and it's labeled five volts plus. Then we're gonna come down to A5 for the LED ring in. So that's the white remaining wire from the LED. That is now wired up and so is the switch. There's not much to go, only five jumper leads on the Dewpoint connectors. So let's push on. Next we have our push button wires. Now on the instructions it says white and black, but my one's actually both green. It doesn't matter, it's just a switch. There's no polarity for it, so we just need to plug them in the correct pins, but the order does not matter at all. That's gonna come straight after the white one and then the other. And then finally, we have our potentiometer and we need to have it black, red, white from top to bottom. So let's get that in place. And guess what? Just like that, our wiring is finished. How easy is this to build? The instructions now call for us to do a test. So I'm gonna get my nine volt battery. I'm gonna make sure my switch is set to off. Plug it in, turn it on. It has flashed to life and fingers crossed. We don't need to cross our fingers. We knew it was gonna work all along, but it has come to life. So let's test the different modes here. Our potentiometer changes the brightness. And of course that will affect the battery life. So find a happy middle ground there. And then let's pop that on. And then we have our push button, which changes between the modes. According to the instructions, there are in fact 10 modes and they're all different color schemes and flashing styles and things like that. And there's a really nice feature built in that when you press, it'll flash the LED for the mode. So that was mode one. I press again, two, mode three, mode four, and so forth. Everything seems to be working perfectly here. So I'm gonna switch it off to save my battery and I'm gonna finish the physical installation of this. 
Okay, so we have one, two, three components plus our battery to get into place. So let's start on that. We've got this outside channel here that needs to come around for our switch wires. So that's an easy one to start with. Also got our battery clip and that needs to come through the little cutout here. Because this of course is our battery compartment that opens up so we can see it's gonna hang in there nice and tidily. Our switch we're gonna do last because it's gonna sit as we saw before in the gap between the top and the bottom pieces. So let's do the Nano. We want to orientate this with the USB slot and then on the inside there's two 3D printed parts that will line up with the PCB for the Nano and that's gonna keep everything going the right way. Now we are trying to negotiate the wiring for the potentiometer. So I would recommend coming from the back and then sliding it across so the pins go either side like that. Otherwise things are gonna get in the way and it's gonna be difficult. And just like that, it's into place. Like we mentioned, our switch is gonna sit right here in the rectangle and that just leaves our wiring coming out of the top so let's try and keep everything tidy as we put this into position there we go our single screw in the top to lock it all into place with our allen key and please remember we're going into 3d printed parts so you don't want to over torque this or you probably just snap the mounting boss off on the inside okay let's slide open our battery compartment should have left enough slack here that you can actually access this if you haven't just pull it through a little bit more let's reinsert our battery once more case back into place final test so it starts in mode zero which is demo mode it flashes between other things we need to press the button to then enable the proper modes. Let's try it with the bars on top. And if it was on display, you'd probably spin it around so you couldn't see the controls. Let's test bars number two on mode eight. I think that was my favorite. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Crank up the brightness. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think it might make a really nice Mother's Day gift if you're a maker gifting to your mum or maybe your mum's a maker and into 3D printing and electronics. Well, she's gonna love this. So there we have it, a nice, easy 3D printing Arduino project. Remember that you've got many different modes to play with here. Remember that you can power it from the USB to avoid the need for batteries and that you can change the design on top. So I've tried both of the designs suggested here and they both look pretty good but you can design your own or you can find any other vase on Thingiverse or any other website in fact and as long as you print it in clear it's going to work perfectly with this so get out there have some fun maybe try your own design thanks for watching until next time happy 3d printing G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.